and then to end up fifth or fourth as it was and uh, I thought God this can't happen again and ab it worked absolutely right that Sean was on in front of me on the last lap and I managed to draft him and uh, get into the last corner first which was which, all about. Clever tactics there from John Reynolds and he's done a good job here at Thruxton. Well that's it from Thruxton, two of the best superbike races we've seen this year. The championship has closed up again, both Yamaha and Kawasaki are very much back on the pace. There'll be more of the same from Alton Park, where the next two races come from, so join us then. But from all of us at Thruxton, thanks for watching and bye-bye. And looking ahead to Monday, you'll be able to see the latest round of the World Superbike Championships from California. That's on BBC Two. Join Susie Perry and the team from 6.45. But here at Wimbledon, where well, we've been keeping you up to date, we've been on weather watch here for the past uh, few minutes, and about 20 minutes ago, we got really excited because this is what happened. A big cheer from the centre court crowd sitting there. The players were told they'd be on court in about 15 minutes, and so we were preparing for play, of course. Tim Hemman, Goran Ivanisevic, the first match on centre court. But unfortunately, no sooner were they off than they were on again, I'm afraid. Another shower over Wimbledon. And th these are the scenes uh, on centre court at the moment. The umbrellas up once again, and we're told that they're probably going to put the tent up again, which isn't good news. Uh, but we are told that we're going to have some dry weather later today, so we're still hopeful that we'll get to play on centre. And a tremendous schedule on centre, of course, that unfinished semi-final, Hemman against Ivan Isevich, and the ladies' final, Venus Williams against Justin Ennan. Well, uh, more famous people arriving now for the Royal Box. We saw the Prince and Princess of Belgium arriving earlier, and uh, just a few moments ago, Baroness Thatcher arrived here at Wimbledon, along with her husband, Sir Dennis, to take their place in the Royal Box. And when they see the seating plan, they'll be sitting next to the person who's arriving here. It is the former President of the United States, Bill Clinton who's arriving here at Wimbledon for the first time, but uh, he was at the French Open just last month, so obviously quite a tennis fan. And uh, as I said, he'll be taking his place in the Royal Box, uh, right next to uh, Baroness Thatcher. No doubt uh, have a lot to talk about, about the tennis and the weather and uh, all things like that. And another famous face has arrived in the studio, Martin. I, I, I don't know what Clinton and Thatcher are going to talk about, but it should be interesting. I would like to be a, like a fly on the wall and listen on that conversation. You know we always talk about the weather. That's what, I'm sure that's what they'll start with. Of course, you have to, especially today. I mean, it's apt, but... Uh, uh, it's, it's a bit unfair. I mean, they put them next to each other. I mean, that's, that's right. It's pretty funny, actually, when you think about it. I mean, she is as far right as you can get. And, uh, and he's, he used to start it out on the left, and he's sort of in the middle, right up, with, up there with Tony Blair. But uh, yeah. in any case... It'll be interesting uh, having a camera on them, but hopefully we'll get some play on court and they'll be able to take their place. Days like this are just horrible, especially after we've had 10 glorious days of sunshine, just the odd shower. This is horrible. We've had great weather. I've been in Europe, this is my eighth week, and we've had am amazing weather the whole way through. And this is like the worst day mm. and yesterday uh, that, that we've had in two months, so we can't really complain, but it's a shame that it comes so late in the tournament. Mm. It's easier to deal with it, I think, earlier on, because everybody's dealing with it. And now, for example, with Rafter being finished, and Henman and Ivan is so about to go and it's just Tim's second uh, second uh, delay, uh, match, delay yeah. like that so it's like another match you mm -hmm. know you never get to relax on those days off you don't really put your feet up but you can at least sort of mm -hmm. breathe out a little bit and you know we're going to practice for a couple hours and you know the day is yours and, and also trying to sleep last night would have been awful <laughs> right in the middle of a match again it's, it's, it's a lot of extra strain so mm -hmm. Tim who knows how, how he's doing it because he's got his whole country on his shoulders and uh, and now you know he's basically having to play two extra matches so it's pretty rough. You say the whole country I mean have you seen the hill just out here I mean they've been s sitting in there under the umbrellas for, for hours out on the hill and then you know they're just going to sit there patiently waiting for Tim I mean that's you know what the, the true fans isn't it? It's uh, well you the true fans really do come out here at Wimbledon waiting mm -hmm. out in the line but here they wait in line just to watch on the telly I mean mm -hmm. it's a big screen but I guess you still have a feeling that you're sort of in the stadium so. There they are uh, and they can see themselves look they're waving their brollies <laughs> yeah well done we 
We're very proud of you. You stay there, because we're sure we'll get some tennis later on. No, they should have brought like a hot pink brolly so they could spot themselves easier. Yes. <laughs> They'll be all on their mobile phones now. Did you see my brolly on the TV? <laughs> but there they are, uh, and well done uh, to them. But you talk about uh, Tim Henman. He seems to cope with the pressure so well. He's been doing amazingly well. I mean, he's really played better and better and better throughout the tournament. Mm -hmm. Again, when he came out of for the delay uh, finish match with t uh, Todd Martin, he mm -hmm. was he was at another level, emotionally mm -hmm. and physically, and and he still keep keeps it up and and keeps improving. So, you know, I really didn't give him that much of a chance again to to win. But now he's he's a man on a mission, and he believes he can win. I think mm -hmm. before when Sampras was in the way. That was really an insurmountable obstacle, but I think once Sampras was out, and it was obvious he has not been playing that well, hasn't mm -hmm. won anything since last year at Wimbledon. So, you know, I think he, he was hoping that things might fall his way, and then I think once Sampras was out, his confidence just shot mm -hmm. and shot up, and now uh, he believes he can win, and, and I think he can. He's really in the driving seat in this match. He leads two sets to one. 2-1, and it, the momentum was so with him, whereas it wasn't in that other delayed match, you said, against Todd Martin. I mean, he possibly would have gone out if the rain hadn't come, come uh, that exactly. time. So it's a, a totally different feeling for him. He almost feels as though, you know, I've missed my chance. I've got to remember where I was in that match. Well, now he's, I mean, he's in the driver's seat, but mm. Goran's serving. And, yeah. uh, you know, he wins the next point, it's 2-all, and, and basically now you're starting a set to 4 mm. instead of to 6. I mean, it's 2-all, and it's, it's a whole new ball game. Uh, I'm sure he would like to get that early break so mm -hmm. that he can serve it out because again when you get into a tie break anything can happen and the fifth set anybody's ball game and, and it's it's odd to, to be playing a fifth set when you've only played one set mm -hmm. and, and there you are so I'm sure he would love to get it out of the way of course and get it out of the way early because the longer this goes on the less ch time who if it is Tim but who, for either of them to prepare for the final if they don't get on say till six or seven tonight and then you got the women waiting for yeah. for that. So it's it's a crazy day. Hopefully, like you said, it's supposed to be mm. a dry patch later this That's afternoon. That's what they tell so us, maybe in about an hour. They do know what they're talking about when it comes to the weather. I mean, I, it's funny. You see the groundsmen, and it's uh, the sun's out, and, and the groundsmen are there waiting. I'm like, what do they know? We don't. Sure enough, five minutes later, it starts raining, and they're ready. <laughs> and they, they put up the covers before, really, the deluge comes. And I think that's why... It's been so much quicker to get back on the court. It doesn't mm -hmm. take uh, long to, uh, to wait, so that's, that's good. But once they put the tent up, it's mm -hmm. now, no. Yeah, I know. We're well, here for a while. They said an hour. We'll see whether they're right today. We certainly hope so. Ladies final, you mentioned it there. It's Venus Williams against uh, Justin Enam. We showed some pictures of Venus, who mm -hmm. hardly got any practice today, just a few minutes, and really wasn't very happy that the rain came down. I mean, Jana was here. You know, she said, oh, well, you know, she won't mind too much because she's got a lot of matches under her belt. But you almost want it to go so well on a big day, don't you? don't want any sort of hiccups. Well, it's the same for both players. Again, uh, depends on how, when you like to practice before the match. Maybe mm -hmm. Justine got her whole hour. She, she and, got a good practice. And, yeah. and, and Venus only got a few minutes. You can always go indoors and just hit some serves, uh, mm -hmm. warm up the body. I mean, you remember pretty quickly how to hit a tennis ball, but it's nice to stay in that routine. Mm -hmm. I remember the year I lost to Capriati in 91. Uh, I wore out three pairs of indoor shoes and only one pair of grass court shoes. I only really played on grass when we were playing matches. The rest of the time it was always either practicing for 10 minutes at a rangy on wet grass with, with mm. balls that were about this big, yeah, or which indoors, doesn't do a lot, which it? doesn't do anything, yeah. or indoors. Mm. And so, but of course, again, everybody's in the same boat. Now maybe Justine's got a little bit of an edge because she started practicing, but you know, once the match mm. starts, all that goes out the window. You've been playing tennis for 20 years. <laughs> you know how to hit the ball. <laughs> but it's also, it's, it must be difficult for Justine, in a way, her first major final, first Grand mm. Slam final, to be sitting there and having this long wait. In some ways, you always would like to get on with it, I'm sure. I think us Europeans are, are used to it. I mean, we, you know, we <laughs> deal weather. with rain, especially <laughs> here in England. I mean, we, we did get spoiled this, uh, this fortnight. So, mm. it's, again, once the match starts, it's the worst. I think for me, I like to eat. I like to have a full belly. Yes, that's the other problem. About an hour prior to the match and not knowing when you're going to go on. Yeah. This just makes it difficult for women to go on after men's matches. You could play in an hour and a half, you could play in four hours. So you just keep watching the match and, uh, and you know, hope to sort of stay on an even keel food-wise as well as being loose mm -hmm. and not get too uptight emotionally and just, you know, you just want to stay neutral as much as you can, but it's tricky. 
Mm, how do you see the, the final today? Do you think Justine, I mean, she sh showed such maturity. I mean, we talked about it after the match, you know, serve volleying just at the right time. She seems to have the tactics sort of right. Do you think that she can really worry Venus in this final? Uh, she definitely can worry her. I mean, she, she beat up on her pretty badly on, on clay in, mm -hmm. uh, in Berlin, and I saw that match, and she, she beat Venus 6-1, 6-4. Of course, it's clay. That is her best surface, and Venus is worst surface. Mm. But still, uh, Venus knows she can be beaten, and uh, Justine knows how to mix it up. And I think she'll need to mix it up a little more than she did against Capriati. But uh, she can certainly keep uh, Venus Williams on her heels if she executes. Well, will it be for Venus the fact that she's playing someone maybe that she didn't expect to play in the final, like someone like a, a Capriati or a Hingis or something? Does that make it that much more difficult in the match that, hey, I should, I'm supposed <coughs> to win this? It's, it's trickier. I think uh, it would be easier in, in some way for, for Venus to have played Jennifer Capriati because you expect to, to have that mm -hmm. match or beginning of the tournament. If you're looking that far, it's going to be either my sister or, or, or Jennifer or, or Hingis. Mm -hmm. Well, Hingis went out early, so it's either my sister or, or Serena, uh, or, Serena or, uh, or Jennifer. And all of a sudden, Justine, I don't know. I wonder how she plays on, on, on grass. Mm -hmm. I, I know, again, I hate to bring up my experiences, but I guess that's you, why you, you asked me, you right? You do, exactly. <laughs> uh, one year You've I got kept, a number to choose uh, from. <laughs> I was zeroing, of course, Chris. I mean, it was going to yeah. be Chris in the finals again, Chris in the finals. So I, everything was about getting practice partners, getting ready for that one match. And uh, then Hannah Mandikova beats her. And I'm playing Hannah in the finals. <laughs> and Hannah Sivan Valing playing a completely different game. So I had to adjust not just my, my emotional thing, but, but also the tactics and everything else. And it, it, was, it was difficult. Of course, I only had... I, I, and now, because of the way Goran plays, he's almost holding his breath every time he hits a serve because he doesn't know where Goran's going to return, either bottom of the bottom of the net or clean winner. And, yeah. you know, so he really, to a certain extent, all he's got to do is just play as well as he can and, uh, you know, just hope for the best, really, you know. Yeah, and we saw shots uh, of him practicing out there, but he'll need a good warm-up today because he's got to come out strong because it's 30-15 on his on his serve, on Henman's serve, so he can't afford uh, any, a couple of loose points early on. No, he can't. He's got to get that first serve in. I, I'm hoping today he perhaps slows that first serve down a little bit just to make sure he gets a few in because Goran was starting to handle his second serve yesterday mm. towards the end of that set because uh, that's the nervous time but you know today whoever d whoever's nerve holds it's going to be one point here and there is going to win the match talking of the nerve uh, holding i mean we, we know all about the goran serve and he's produced that but uh, there were a few volleys if tim can actually get the return there he looked a, a little nervy on the volleys well goran's always been brittle on the volleys he's he has his days where he, he doesn't miss any he's his days where he hits them all over the place and he tends to like the harder return. That's what Tim's trying to do. He's trying to chip the ball down and, and get it down to his feet and just float it back. And then, obviously, you'd have an opportunity to get to, to the second shot and have a, have a shot at the passing shot or the lob, which has been so successful. Mm -hmm. But it's just not that easy when the guy's serving bullets like yeah. that to actually control it at all. But the, it's the same old story. When you've got a big server, the only thing you can do is hope that he misses the first serve and then take advantage of that second mm -hmm. serve. And I don't particularly like... Uh, Tim chipping the ball on the second serve. I reckon he's got to have a go at it. He's got to he's got to go for a winner or you know get attacking on on the second serve that's, if he ever sees it. Well, that's interesting because yeah. a lot of people are saying he really needs to block it because he's such a good blocker of the serve. You know, just chipping it back and, rather than hitting it. Well, definitely on the first serve he's got to do that. I mean, the second serve I think it's about it's 50-50. Occasionally he's got it on the backhand side. He's got to I think drill it and go for it. But notice yesterday, every time Goran played one of those sloppy volleys, he then comes up with the ace. And that's, that's the problem with playing Goran. He gives you a cheap one, but then he's always got the ace to follow up on. And, and you know, Tim's got to hope that he starts to miss a few of those big first serves today. Of course, we're talking about what they need to do on court, but we're forgetting how emotional these three days have been, particularly for Tim, because this is a huge match. Yes, he's been in the semi-finals before, but he's always been against Sampras. You know, here he has a chance. Goran's been in the final three times. So emotionally, it's going to be tough for Tim. I really feel for the guys. You know, I, you know, this is one of the reasons why I retired. Is, is things like this, is hanging around, getting back and playing after rain delays. Oh, there's nothing worse. It really isn't. And, and you know, I really feel for Tim. I think it's, you know, I hate to say that. Uh, I don't. I don't know if he's going to lose. I still think he's going to win. But uh, even though I said he's going to lose, just to, to wind Lloydie up here last night. But I still, I still think he's he's going to win. But oh, gee, you know, it's 50-50. You know, or 50. 
51-49. I <laughs> think he's going to win. You know, it's it's so close. And and at what pressure, poor guy. Mm. It really feels. I real feel for him. Yeah, because this buzz, you can tell this crowd's going to be up for it today, can't you? Already. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You, you can hear it already. Here they come. That's for the ball kids. That's for the ball kids. Yeah. No, they're going to be ready, and that's going to help Tim. Obviously, the first game, he's got to win that first game and get to three all, and then anything can happen. Yeah, and for, for Tim, I mean, we, he was playing the better tennis of the two players, but I don't think it's about that now, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's just, as perhaps there's one or two points either way. Yeah.